Thank you for joining me today to think about responding to students' writing, how we can provide effective and efficient feedback. Incorporating writing assignments into our courses definitely creates some challenges, especially for faculty outside of the English department who have content heavy courses and need to get students to learn a lot of information. Some challenges include when would we use a writing assignment and what would we have students write about? And perhaps the thing I hear most often is that faculty worry about how to provide feedback on students' writing and how much time that would take. Well, these challenges are important to recognize, but I really think the benefits of using writing assignments outweigh the challenges or the worries we have. Writing assignments are proven to engage students in course content and to create those critical thinkers we need our students to become, especially by the end of their program. Providing effective feedback involves a few things. We want our students to become high metacognitive thinkers. We want them to see themselves as agents making intentional choices. Low level metacognitive thinkers tend to avoid dialectic thinking. They don't imagine a reader, an audience, or a naysayer. Instead, they see themselves as just following directions rather than making choices. We want to use writing to get them to that high metacognitive thinking um, ability where they think dialectically, they're seeking alternative approaches and viewpoints um, in their discipline, in their writing. Another thing we want to consider is this. When providing effective feedback, we don't want to use comments primarily to justify a grade. Yes, students need to know why they earned a particular grade. But we want our comments to, again, nurture that ability to be a critical thinker, to think more deeply about the content, or comments on how to improve their writing and communication in future writing assignments or any kind of project. Additionally, our comments should focus on higher order concerns. A lot of faculty say, I don't want to have to comment on grammar, or I don't even feel qualified to comment on grammar. Well, you don't ever have to comment on grammar if you don't want to. And in fact, our comments really should focus on the higher order concerns when it comes to writing and thinking. Finally, you don't need to feel that you have to intervene and provide feedback on every single draft. In fact, it's sometimes better to save your comments for mid to late drafts. Let students do the messy thinking in the first draft. Um, maybe get some feedback from peers, and then offer you a second draft before you provide any kind of feedback. The rest of this presentation will look at seven strategies or options for how to provide effective feedback, but in an efficient way, in a way that does not add a lot to your already heavy grading load. English faculty are very familiar with peer reviews, and it's something that any faculty member in any discipline can use to help students engage with each other and save you time when it comes to providing feedback as well. Part of a national study of teacher and peer response in the U.S. collected more than 1,000 teacher and peer responses from course e-portfolios and peer reviews at 70 institutions of higher ed. The results showed that when students were given a thoughtfully designed script for peer review, they actually provided feedback to peers that was of similar quality to the instructor feedback. This is really exciting. Students can often be the first readers of each other's drafts and give each other the types of feedback that faculty would give to their students. I'm going to show you a couple snapshots of my own peer review instructions. I've designed peer reviews for my writing students in this way. I talked to them about the three C's of good reviews. Early in my teaching career, I'd have students do peer reviews and I'd often see students respond with, wow, this paper's so great, it's perfect, I like everything about it. Well, that's certainly not very helpful feedback to the student who then needs to revise the draft for me. So I have students write to each other to provide critical feedback, advice about what is confusing or unclear, constructive feedback, advice about what to improve, develop, or rethink in the paper, and then considerate feedback, 
comments about what works well in the paper and what they like. Feel free to pause the video to read the next couple of slides um, in detail. I'll just talk through it briefly. My first step is always to have students say hello to each other and get to know each other. But step two is where they provide critical feedback. I give some description here about what critical feedback is or the types of questions that might guide their feedback. Students certainly don't have to comment on every single question or topic I mention here, but I do point out that I want students to comment on the ideas in the paper and not the grammar. It's really not helpful to, to talk about grammar mistakes in a very early rough draft that's going to be revised once or twice more. Here's where you, where you will see the descriptions of constructive feedback and considerate feedback. Both are very helpful and I tell students it is important to point out what's working well so that students will recognize that and continue to make those smart writing moves in other papers. But by providing feedback this way, critical, constructive, and considerate, the student writer receives comments in different areas of the draft and very concrete, specific steps they can take or suggestions they can use to revise the draft before it comes to me for feedback. Another option for providing efficient feedback is for you to respond to just partial drafts. You might even have students post just their introduction paragraph and first body paragraph in a class discussion board where you can respond to each student publicly so that other students can see your response to their classmates and learn from that response as well. For me as an instructor, this is a great way to save time. It really helps me identify those students who perhaps aren't on track or who aren't understanding the instructions very well. All I need to see is the first or second paragraph to know that and I can use my comments to kind of redirect them and get them on track. Another thing you could do is have students respond to partial drafts and even give them quick little templates like you see here at the bottom for what they can fill in. It doesn't require a lot of time from the student either, but it does get their peer something really specific and concrete they can use when continuing to work on the draft. Another way to provide feedback is to use progress rubrics. Faculty who use rubrics often save them for the end of the writing process, and they use them as a way just to evaluate the final draft. I find that students really like getting progress rubrics, and it saves me a lot of time in the grading process as well. I'll give a rubric with a first or second draft that helps students see kind of how they're doing so far, and they can easily identify the areas where they're demonstrating strengths and the areas they need to focus more on when revising. This is also a great way to prepare a student to have a conference with you where you might talk in more depth about their writing. Here's a quick screenshot of a progress rubric I use. I like to color code things for students, but what I would do is read their paper and then quickly check off the boxes here where I see they are demonstrating the writing skills or the content I want to see in their papers and where they're not quite there yet. And you can use any kind of descriptors you want. But when this is filled out, students can say, wow, I have a lot of check marks in the first column and about five check marks in the third column. I really need to focus my time there when continuing to work on this draft. Students often like to take the progress rubrics to the writing tutors as well um, so that they can more clearly communicate to the writing tutor the type of help they want on an essay. And if you want, you can always provide an end comment that just quickly recognizes the strengths, provides a summary of a limited number of problems, and then offers some recommendations for improving the writing. Another option you have is to use models feedback. With models feedback, you actually don't make any comments on the individual submissions. That means assignments can be graded very quickly. What you would do is provide feedback through in-class discussion of selected essays that serve as models. So rather than commenting on all the drafts, you might review what an A paper looks like. You could share this on screen or ask a student permission to share their paper or maybe even remove their name 
from the paper, but you could go through why this paper is successful. Um, a great thing to do as a follow-up activity is to then have students look at their own drafts and kind of compare it to the sample model paper and to reflect on their own strengths or what they see their own essays as potentially lacking when compared to the model essay. And this could prepare them better to revise if you are going to allow that as an option or prepare them to write the next major writing assignment if you're going to use more than one writing assignment in the semester. Norming sessions are a wonderful way to communicate your expectations to students, and students actually like them. This is where you would bring in a sample writing, sample essay maybe, and give your students a rubric to assess the paper. Students read and assess on their own and then report back and discuss, you know, why do some students grade it an A, a B, a C, a D. You might be really surprised at students' responses. Sometimes they'll be drastically different. Sometimes they'll be more aligned. But then you can kind of come in with, well, here's how I would evaluate it and why. So this really prepares students better to know your expectations. Um, and I usually do norming sessions either before students write their own papers or right after their first draft. Conferences are a great way to provide feedback if you don't have time to give written feedback. In conferences, you want to focus on higher order concerns like the student's ideas, organization, or overall logic and development. Now that we do so much virtual learning, it would be great to have students meet with you virtually where you can actually record the session and send them the link later to watch over if they'd like. You could even encourage students to record your conversations on their phones if you're open to that as well. But it's really important during conferences to make sure students do most of the talking, but you can prompt them with questions that will lead to really effective feedback for your student. In conferences, ask the student to explain the assignment, especially if you get the sense that the student might not have understood the assignment so well. This will create an opportunity for you all to talk about your expectations. You also want to find out the student's expectations for the conference. We try as faculty members not to dominate the conversation when it comes to students' writing. Get students to open up and to tell you what they want, what kind of help they think they need, and to really drive the, the conversation themselves. And ask the student about their writing process so far. What do they think is working? Um, what kind of problems have they have? And these conversations lead to great conversations about their writing, but also you and the student are building a relationship here. The student will become more comfortable talking with you about their writing and their learning, and perhaps will lead to more conversations that are important related to other areas of class content. The last suggestion in this video is to use stock grading comments. If you feel that you'll use a writing assignment over many semesters, what you can start to do is build a document where you um, include common comments you find yourself giving to students. For instance, how many ways can you explain to a student what a thesis statement is? If you know that students are struggling with thesis statements, you can have that comment already prepared that you simply copy and paste in a, to a student's electronic draft. Or if you need to point out some grammatical errors, you can have links to short videos that explain comma slices and fragments or run-on sentences and you just copy and paste that link for your student to review later. So you don't have to spend the time providing those explanations over and over. Instead, you can use your time to provide more personalized feedback on the student's ideas. I hope this video has been helpful and perhaps encourages you to think more about using writing assignments in your course. Feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I have plenty more videos on talking about writing with your students, using best practices to design writing assignments, and more.